G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, it's been quite a while since I've done a metalwork uh, review as far as products go. I've been busy doing other stuff. and Anyway, today we're going to look at hole saws. This is uh, my hole saw set. I've got this and there's a whole box of bits and pieces here I've picked up. And these, this type of hole saw actually works pretty good on wood particularly, you know, if you want to so, you know, punch a hole through a door, put a lock in, or uh, anything really. And they've got good depth, you know, you can go in a long way with them. So, um, yeah, they're basic, but they work pretty good. They're just a sort of a high carbon spring steel thing. And you've got all the different size centres that just click in. And that's all I've ever had all, all my working life. And, of course, anything with them is, they're great for wood and plastic. Uh, and even aluminium, you can... Use them on aluminium sheeting, you know. But that's it, anything hard, any any uh, ferrous material like steel, you know, stainless. No, you can't use them on stuff like that. It's just not designed for it. But they do do a good job on wood because they've got a very high TPI and uh, you really need that for wood. Anyway, I was looking at the Banggood catalogue and uh, they got some whole saws. There are a whole range of different sorts and one of them is one that basically they say is and it looks to be ideal for cutting through a steel plate. So, you know, say you want to drill a big hole in some steel plate, you know, five mil or something like that. Well, these will do it, and they have a very coarse uh, TPI, tooth, tooth spacing, and they also have a looks to be like tungsten carbide uh, tips on the actual unit. So I'll show you the one with we're going to look at today uh, in these next screen grabs. And there it is. So as you can see, it looks pretty impressive. I think it's got the money because it's, um, well, you know, uh, at the moment, it's like 28 bucks Australian on special for a short time. So let's have a closer look at uh, what they sent me. So here they all are, out of their individual plastic boxes, which are marked with their sizes. 50 mil, 35 mil, 30, 28, 26, 25, 22, 21, 20. 18, 16, 15. Pretty good uh, range of sizes there. Obviously, they can't give you every millimetre increment, or it'd be too many. But I think that's quite a good spread. And they actually look quite well made. Uh, the, the whole lot of them seem to be pretty well constructed. The shank on each of them is 10 millimeter diameter with three three flats on it so that won't slip in your chuck or drill chuck or whatever you're going to do. The actual ends of them, the number of cutters vary depending on the diameter as you can see, I will all use the same size carbide or tungsten cutting tip, which is bronze brazed on. So they look to be quite well done. We'll find out when we use them. And the cutting depth varies between. 13 and 16 mil with the spring removed. Now the springs come out quite easily. In fact, you have to be careful you don't lose them. They just fit on, sort of press on fit for the for the uh, the drill centre, which is the same size drill centre on all of them. It's held in with a Phillips head screw. Uh, this size, you don't get a screwdriver, of course. This is mine. So, I presume there's a flat in there. I haven't taken one of these out. 
I'll see if I can get one out and we'll see what the drill is uh, held in with, whether it's, uh, I'd expect it to be a flat on the end, but I wouldn't think it would be just a, just the, uh, the screw, but I'll take the one out and we'll have a look. There you go, that's got a flat on it, which is what I thought it would be the case. All good there. So the Phillips head screw will do that quite nicely, hold it in position. So all the load bearing areas got flats on them, so this is good. So now the next thing is to spin a few up in the lathe chuck, check them for concentricity. You know, I mean that's going to be a critical thing. And from there on we can try try them out. Just before we do spin these up, we can have a closer look at the cutters and you can see that they're the same dimension on all of them. You've got about, uh, well I measured these up and there's about a mil variation between the wall thickness and the cutter width, so that means they're going to be uh, unlikely to, uh, to bind the plug that it cuts out and the hole it makes should have plenty of clearance um, having a wider cutter so that's a good thing overall uh, the quality looks good you know the, the drill is obviously high speed steel the spring looks good you can do it with the spring in or the spring out it's just that the spring obviously is there to push out the plug after you've drilled through but of course you can only go in a shorter depth because of the spring, it will be restricting the travel. It's just a matter of how easily the plug comes out of the, the housing afterwards. All remains to be seen, but overall, so far, everything looks good. I'm, uh, yeah, happy with what I see so far. So let's move it right along. All right, first off, we'll try the 50 mil. See how that looks. That's plenty good enough. All right, now we'll try the 30. Yep, no problem there. And the 16. So you got to say that's all looking good. So I suppose now we need to drill some holes. So to do that we will use the, the lathe. I'll put the four jaw chuck on it. I mean to use these you should re really use them with the work mounted and the drill, the drilling piece uh, held in something like a, a lathe or a drill press. I mean freehand drilling with these is possible but it's not ideal. Not for this sort of cutter really. So I'll do all the filming on the lathe and uh, we can get a much better look at it that way, control everything. Uh, it's pretty difficult to film on my drill press, it's in a bad position. So, alright, I'll fit the four jaw and dig out some old steel plate. We'll see what we can do. Right, well I've got some 2.5mm square section in the four jaw. I've got my big Jacobs chuck, key chuck, because I did read an article a while back where someone said it wasn't a good idea to use self-tightening chucks like Rome's and that um, for oversized drilling because they can tighten up so hard that you can't get them undone and I know that that can happen definitely so I'll use my big old Jacobs on this. And we'll start off with a, uh, what have we got? 26 mil, which is close to an inch. So we'll fit this in and we'll spin this at about oh, about 450, I think, it would be pretty right. You'd use the same sort of uh, dimensional uh, turning speeds that you would use for single point cutting. So, um, yeah, we'll work on that plan. So we'll try and punch a hole through this. Right, so we're ready to go. Now they say to use lube 
to avoid chipping the teeth, so I'll use some just some caro and engine oil on it and try to get all over the camera and uh, see how we go. All right, let's give this a shot. Wow, that was nice. That worked beautiful. That was a piece of cake. Terrific. I'll measure it and see what it turned, what it uh, came up as, but it's supposed to be 26 mil. Yeah, that was effortless. Twenty-six point four six. So it went slightly bigger than 26. That's not bad. I'm happy with that. 26.46. So it went half a mil bigger. Really good. All right. Well, that was an absolute snack. Let's get some heavier stuff and give that a go. All right. Let's try some 10 mil steel plate with the same uh, cutter. The teeth stood up. No problem. So... We'll just work with the one for now and uh, see how it all holds together. Let's give it a go. Now I've taken the spring out for this so we can get the full depth. Pretty hard steel this. I have an old lawnmower, stop mower. Plug out. Just a light tap. Hmm. It's a bit hot. <laughs> so yeah, 
it did it, no problem. You just have to go slow, keep the lube up, and yeah, um, clear the chips. They, they do build up on the on the sides here a little bit, but overall it, it wasn't bad. And the teeth, perfect, as good as when we started. So it's made of the right stuff. It it is really, whoops, it is really good. So yeah, wow, pretty impressive. So there you go. The little gauge it does what it says it does. Makes round holes in thick and thin steel. And it seems like pretty good bang for buck to me. Uh, the link to the product, the set, is in the video description. And that's it, really. What more can I say? The proof is in the pudding. Okay, I hope you found it interesting. And, uh, well, that's it for me for now. See you next time. Cheers.